Welcome to our video lecture on the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a really important system that tends to get overlooked. So let's take a look first at the functions of the system. One of the most important functions in the lymphatic system is it returns extra fluid from the tissues back into the circulatory system. If you remember the way capillaries work, fluid is pushed out of the capillaries into the tissues by the blood pressure. And then the osmotic pressure of all the solutes left in the blood pulls fluid back into the capillary. Unfortunately, it's not really an even exchange. The blood pressure pushes out more fluid than the osmotic pressure can pull back into the capillaries. And that leaves extra fluid in the tissues. The lymphatic system collects that extra fluid and returns it back into the circulatory system. If we didn't have the lymphatic system, we would end up pumping an extra two to four liters of fluid into our tissues every day. What do you think would happen if we had two or four liters of extra fluid just hanging around in our tissues? Yep, swelling or edema, lots of swelling. Anything that interferes with the lymphatic system's function tends to cause swelling. The second important function of the lymphatic system is to act as part of the immune system. A lot of nasty things get into our tissues and into the tissue fluid and they're all swept up into the lymphatic system and our lymphatic organs have to deal with things like debris and microorganisms, cancer cells and all sorts of toxins and viruses that we don't want in our tissues. The lymphatic organs help filter these out of the tissue and destroy them, and they also help to activate immune system cells to fight pathogens like bacteria or viruses or fungi that get into our bodies. The third function of the lymphatic system almost seems like an afterthought. The last thing the lymphatic system does for us is it helps absorb lipids from the small intestine during digestion. It's difficult to get the lipids directly into the bloodstream, so we end up sweeping them into the lymphatic system and they travel through the lymphatic system until they're eventually added back into the circulatory system. Let's talk about the components of the lymphatic system, and we're going to start with the lymph itself. The lymph is the fluid that's collected from the tissues that goes into the lymphatic system. And the lymph is similar to blood in that it is mostly water. Um, and it does contain a lot of different types of molecules and cells. Um, the lymph does contain a lot of ions, proteins, hormones, lipids, and lots of cells like lymphocytes and macrophages, and debris, um, foreign material, microorganisms that have all been swept up out of the tissue fluid. We find all those things, the good and the bad, all mixed up in the lymph. The lymph is carried through the body in lymphatic vessels. The function of the lymphatic vessels is to carry the lymph all the way from the various parts of the body back up through the lymphatic vessels that eventually dump into the subclavian veins. So all of that extra fluid that's being collected from the tissues ends up being returned to circulation in the subclavian veins. So it's not lost or wasted. The structure of the lymphatic vessels is similar to the structure of the veins. They do have three layers, the tunica interna, the tunica media, and the tunica externa, and they also contain valves. Since the lymph is under very low pressure, similar to the blood in the veins, the walls of the lymphatic vessels are much thinner than what we would see in the arteries. Similar to the veins, we do need to have the valves to prevent the backflow of lymph because it's under such low pressure, and we also need a number of mechanisms to help move the lymph back toward the heart. And these are very similar to what we saw with veins. They include uh, muscle contractions being very important for moving lymph up the lymphatic vessels to get it back up to the subclavian veins. We also see gravity helping to drain lymph from the parts of the body that are above the heart, like the head, or when you're laying down and putting your feet up from the feet. That's one of the reasons that putting your feet up can help with swelling in your ankles, is gravity helps to move the lymph up the lymphatic vessels back to the subclavian veins. Breathing also helps move lymph along because you're compressing the lymphatic vessels in the thoracic cavity to help push the lymph along. And the other thing about the lymphatic vessels is occasionally even the pulse of the arteries can help. Lymphatic vessels that are found near arteries are compressed when the arteries expand with each pulse of blood and that helps to push the lymph up the vessels as well. Let's talk about the flow of lymph through the lymphatic vessels. 
When we're talking about the flow of blood, the smallest blood vessels are the capillaries, and that's where exchange actually occurs. When we're talking about the lymphatic system, the smallest vessels are lymphatic capillaries. Lymphatic capillaries are similar to blood capillaries and that the wall of the capillary is only one cell thick. The difference between them is that in blood capillaries, the cells come right together and are held flat together. When we're talking about lymphatic capillaries, the cells come together overlapping and they're not held together by tight junctions, so the cells can actually separate. This is important because this is the mechanism for getting the fluid from the tissues into the lymphatic vessels. The pressure of the fluid in the tissue forces the lymphatic capillary cells apart and the fluid can flow between the cells into the lymphatic capillary. And in this picture we can see a number of lymphatic capillaries shown in green and you can see how they're intertwined among the blood capillaries. So as fluid is being exchanged in and out of the capillary bed um, containing the blood, the extra fluid can be swept up into the lymphatic capillaries. The lymph travels from the lymphatic capillaries into what are called collecting vessels. The collecting vessels are important because they uh, move the lymph through a series of lymph nodes. And the lymph nodes are where we actually filter all of the debris and the cells and the things that don't belong out of the lymph. This is a really important step because we don't want to take dirty, nasty, bacteria and virus filled lymph and dump it directly into the bloodstream because that's asking for a blood infection. By cleaning up the lymph as it goes through the series of lymph nodes along the collecting vessels, the lymph that's returned into the bloodstream is clean and doesn't contain bacteria, toxins, viruses, or things that will make us sick. The collecting vessels empty into larger lymphatic vessels called the lymphatic trunks. There are six pairs of lymphatic trunks. There's uh, lymphatic trunks for draining the lymph out of the arms, out of the legs, from the head, and from the thoracic region. These lymphatic trunks all dump their lymph into two collecting ducts. The collecting ducts are the largest of the lymphatic vessels and the collecting ducts are what empty into the subclavian veins. The various lymphatic trunks empty into one of two collecting ducts. The collecting duct on the right side is called the right lymphatic duct and the collecting duct on the left side is called the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct actually collects lymph from more lymphatic trunks than the right lymphatic duct does. So in this drawing you can see that three quarters of the body empties its lymph into the thoracic duct. That includes both legs, both sides of the abdomen, the left side of the chest, the left arm, and the left side of the head. I'll go into the thoracic duct. The right arm, the right side of the chest, and the right side of the head empty their lymph into the right lymphatic duct. 